Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today we're going to talk about what to look for in an e-bike for a heavier rider. Now this is a question I get all the time, and it's a pretty important topic because there are so many different e-bikes out there, but there are very specific requirements for riders that are on the heavier end of the spectrum. So let's take a look at exactly what you should be looking for in an e-bike for a heavier rider. First of all, when we talk about e-bikes for heavier riders, we're talking about something above around 275 to 300 pounds or so, or about uh, 140 kilos. Most every electric bike is going to be rated for at least about 250 pounds or somewhere around 120 or so kilos. That's like a bare minimum for almost any electric bike out there. And so when you get into heavier weights, especially approaching 275, 300 pounds or so, that's when you need to start looking at very specific requirements. So first of all, let's talk about different frames. Generally speaking, the more rugged style of frames are gonna be found on bikes that are like mountain bikes, adventure bikes, cargo bikes, utility bikes. Behind me here, I have the Cyrusher XF900. This is a good example of a bike that's just built stronger. It's a mountain bike style fat tire bike. These are the type of bikes that generally come with heavier weight ratings and they come with components that are better suited for heavier riders. Generally speaking, you're gonna to wanna to steer away from the lighter, more efficient bicycle types. So we're talking road bikes, um, even some of the fitness bikes that are really designed to sort of shave off the pounds. They can come with components that are actually less strong and are not ideal for heavier weights. That's just what happens when you try to make these bikes as efficient as possible. When you try to shave off a few grams here or there, you end up with lower strength in the frame and the components. Even things like pedals can have narrower spindles. And I've actually seen uh, some pedals shear off under heavier loads. So uh, something to look for. Even you know road bikes that have uh, saddles that are designed to be extra lightweight can have narrower rails. And you can see failures of these parts. So generally you're gonna be looking at the more ruggedized types of bikes that are designed not just for for heavier riders, but more specifically are designed for heavier types of riding. So impacts, uh, mountain bikes that are designed to you know, hit routes and go off light jumps, those sort of things. Cargo bikes that are designed to carry heavy loads. Utility bikes that have a lot of cycles on them, that sort of thing. Next, probably the most important area of the bike to look at is actually going to be the wheels. This can make or break a bike for heavy riders, and it's really important to look at a few different factors. The first thing is going to be air volume. I generally recommend for heavier riders that you go with a larger tire. You don't necessarily have to go with a fat tire like the Cyrusher here, though the larger air volume is definitely helpful for heavier riders because it helps protect against pinch flats. That's where you hit something sort of sharp like the edge of a curb, or just something that has a bit of an angle to it and it pinches the tube inside the tire and it creates what's called a snake bite flat where you get two little holes where the a tube actually got pinched against the rim. So with more air volume in the tire, it's easier to avoid those situations. It also just makes the bike more comfortable and it reduces impacts on the bike. So areas where, like the saddle, where it might not be rated for someone that's say 350 pounds, when you have squishier tires, you get a little longer impulse when you uh, hit bumps or you have a big shock load on the bike. So larger air volume is generally better. You want to avoid those narrow road tires. Heavier riders can use them, it's just that you have to run really high pressures to avoid pinch flats with a heavy rider, and it's going to create a lot more shock loading on the bike. Next, let's look at rims. You want to go with what's called a double wall rim. If you don't know if your rims have a double wall in them, just ask the vendor, they'll be able to tell you. Single wall rims are usually found on very cheap e-bikes, and so as long as you're looking at something above 12 to 1500 bucks, you're probably never going to see single wall rims. Next, you wanna look at axles. Most e-bikes on the lower end of the budget range are going to have quick-release skewers. That's what this bike has here. And these are fine for everyday riding, but they're not great for high impacts or seriously heavy riders, and especially when those two things combined. Better would be what's called a through axle that actually goes all the way through the hub of the wheel, and it just creates a stronger connection with the bike. When possible, look for through axles. Not only is it better for heavier riders, but it's also an indication that it's just a higher spec bike. It's usually gonna come with better components that are better able to support larger riders. Next, we're gonna look at the brakes. Generally, you're gonna be looking at disc brakes. It is very hard to find e-bikes anymore that have rim brakes outside of a few specialty road style e-bikes. So disc brakes are gonna be your friends and specifically hydraulic disc brakes are better for larger riders. They allow you to provide more braking force over a longer period of time and they don't have cable stretch associated with mechanical brakes. So hydraulic brakes are gonna give you grippier, better braking, and they're also gonna be lower maintenance as well. 
when it comes to comparing different bikes with disc brakes, generally heavier riders are going to want to go with a bike that has larger diameter rotors, the actual disc that's spinning on the wheel. The larger diameter means it's better at heat dissipation, so when you're braking for a long period of time, like going down a hill, and you're stopping a lot of weight from a heavier rider, it's going to give off heat better and not heat up the actual disc. It'll also provide a little more stopping force because you're just providing that braking force a little further away from the center of the wheel. When it comes to suspension, things get a little bit complicated. Generally, I do recommend a full suspension e-bike like the one we have here, just because again, it's gonna create longer impulses, less shock loading on the bike, but you want to avoid cheap suspension. If it's a cheap spring suspension, then it's probably gonna fall apart over time if you're overloading it. The nice thing though about suspension e-bikes, especially ones with rear suspension, is it's very easy to change the shock. So it could be that the bike you have, maybe the shock is only rated up to say 300 pounds. If you weigh 350, you might be able to swap in a higher compression shock so that you can get better performance and you're not always overloading that shock and staying out of the active range. The rear suspension is usually gonna be more critical for you here than the front suspension because more of the rider's weight is compressing the rear of the bike most of the time. The front suspension, it's more active usually when you're hitting obstacles, that sort of thing, but everyday riding all the time, you're compressing more of the rear. Next, let's talk about batteries. Generally speaking, for heavier riders, you're gonna to wanna to go with a bigger battery. And the reason for this is simple physics. With more weight, it takes more energy to move it. So the amount of range that, say, someone who's 150 pounds gets on an e-bike is gonna be a lot more than the range that someone who's twice that weight can get on the same e-bike. So when possible, if an e-bike comes with multiple battery sizes, you're probably gonna to wanna to size up just so that you aren't cutting your range shorter. You also wanna look for higher quality batteries. Batteries made by the big five, those are cells from Samsung, Sanyo, Sony, Panasonic, or LG. Those are some of the best quality cells out there. So if you see one of those, you know it's probably a pretty good battery. It's not made with some no-name cells. So because you're putting more load on the battery and you're requiring more power from it, all of the time, you're gonna want a higher quality battery just so that it stands up under that load. The difference between cheaper and nicer batteries isn't always apparent under low power situations. It's under high power where you really see the difference and the cheaper batteries really start to sag and they just can't deliver that power. So for heavier riders, definitely look for a higher quality battery when it's an option. Next, let's talk about frame style. Now we already talked about how the more ruggedized bikes like the cargo, utility, mountain bikes, fat tire bikes, those are generally gonna be better for heavier riders, but consider the shape of the frame as well. Step throughs might be your friend here. Because step throughs are easier to mount, especially for bigger, taller bikes, it can be a lot easier for heavier riders so you're not trying to throw a leg over a big bike. This is obviously not a step through frame. This is a more traditional mountain bike frame and sometimes it can be tricky to mount. So there are a lot of step through and even mid step bikes that don't necessarily look like the conventional girls bike, though I don't really like that terminology because I think it's weird that we gender bikes, but step through bikes can just be a lot more comfortable for mounting, dismounting for all types of riders, but especially for heavier riders. Another thing to consider with suspension is if you're looking at a bike that's cheaper and you want to go with no suspension, just so you're not stuck with cheap suspension, you can also add a suspension seat post. There are several suspension seat posts out there that are actually designed for heavy riders. One of my favorites is the Thud Buster and it has swappable elastomers in there so you can swap it out for different types of suspension and for different rider weights. That's a good way to add suspension and quality suspension at that to an e-bike that might be a lower dollar e-bike and thus doesn't come with suspension. So there you have it. Those are my tips for looking for the right type of e-bike for a heavier rider. In summary, probably the most important things to look at are the style of the frame and some of the factors related to the wheels, those axles, the rims, air volume, brakes, those sorts of things. So I hope that was helpful for anyone who's looking for an e-bike that fits them personally. And last but not least, before we go, it's time to announce the winner of the book giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... John Johnson, and hang in there because my truck is supposed to arrive soon. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto, or my other books, DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, or The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide. Let me know where to send it, and anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below, you can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And anybody who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win one of my books, you can always find my books on Amazon. Alright, thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you here next time.